Hey, welcome back. Let's take a pause from proving that the 3n plus 1 conjecture is true and look at whether it should be true. Let's uh, start by looking at some other conjectures. In an earlier episode, we looked at whether powers of 2 and 3 are ever adjacent. It happens with 3 and 4 and again with 8 and 9, so you might imagine it happens a lot down the number line. How many times would we expect it to happen under some assumption? Say we've got some big 3 to the x. What's the chance that 3 to the x minus 1 or 3 to the x plus 1 is a power of 2? Well, 3 to the x is roughly 2 to the 1.6x, and at that magnitude, the distance between powers of 2 is about 2 to the 1.6x minus 2 to the uh, 1 minus that. So, What's the chance a random number like 3, in, 3 to the x minus 1 is a power of 2? Well, it's 1 over that. So, for example, take 3 to the 4th equals 81. What's the chance that 80 is a power of 2? At that level, there's a power of 2 about every 40th number. You know, 32, 64, 128. So the chance we could say is 1 in 40. Same for 3 to the x plus 1. Uh, so if we combine those, we can say there's a 1 in 20 chance that a neighbor of uh, 3 to the 4th is a power of 2. But as 3 to the x gets bigger and bigger, the powers of 2 get more and more sparse, and the odds get a lot worse than 1 in 20. And so, actually, if we sum up all the chances through all infinity, we get an estimate of 1.96 times. So we expect the powers of 2 and 3 should be adjacent maybe twice ever. And that's exactly what happens in reality, because in the year 1343, Gersonides showed that um, after 2 and 3 and 8 and 9, uh, there are no more adjacent powers of 2 and 3. Or a simpler example, take the number of perfect squares. There's fewer and fewer squares down the number line. Maybe they just stop at some point. Let's suppose n is up around 1,000. At that level, there's a perfect square about every 65th number. So the chance of n being a square, about 1.5%. And in general, uh, the chance that n is a perfect square is about 1 n squared of n times 2. If we sum that for all n throughout infinity, the sum diverges instead of converging. So we expect there are an infinite number of squares. And of course, there are. Or take the Pythagorean triples, like 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. That's pretty weird. Are there just a finite number of those, um, like in the first example we saw, or an infinite number? Let's see. Uh, we can make an estimate. So here, n uh, not only has to be a perfect square, um, it also has to break down into the sum of two perfect squares. Well, what's the chance of that? There's about n over 2 ways to pick two numbers that sum to n. The smaller number is between 1 and n over 2, and the larger ones between n over 2 and n. Actually, the larger number can't be too close to n if they're both squares. So it's between n over 2 and the next square down from n. Uh, so here's the size of that region. And the number of squares in that region is this. So if we divide one by the other, we get the chance that the larger number is a square, and likewise, here's the chance that the smaller number is a square. Um, so here's the gnarly formula that estimates the probability of a Pythagorean triple at n equals z squared. And if we sum that through over all n throughout infinity, this sum also diverges, mean, meaning that we expect an infinite number of Pythagorean triples. And in fact, there are an infinite number of them. So our heuristic turned out to be um, uh, correspond to the truth. And in an earlier episode, we estimated the number of cycles for 3n plus 1, and we found our expectation was that we should be able to count the number of cycles on one hand. Even better, the chance of a cycle of length greater than 1,000 was astronomically small. That makes us think that the 3n plus 1 conjecture is true. But sometimes this heuristic expectation method doesn't work. So, for example, one simple heuristic predicts that there should be an infinite number of solutions to x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. But there aren't an infinite number of solutions. In fact, there aren't any solutions. 
So in this case, there's something wrong with our assumptions about how the cubes are distributed down the number line. Um, it's not random. Okay, next time we're going to look at whether the future is predetermined and whether the past is knowable.